We have with us Mr. Bob Pragada, the global CEO of Jacob Solutions, a company which is a $15 billion company headquartered in the US and it's mostly involved into critical infrastructure business including semiconductors, civil aviation, ports and also uh, renewable energy. We have with us Mr. Pragada who will be talking to us about their India plan. He is visiting India for the Semicon event and he has met several uh, corporates here and he will be discussing about his plans in India going ahead. Welcome to NDTV Profit. Thank you, Vikas. So, so Mr. Pragada, I would be happy if you can tell our audience you know, what Jacobs is doing right now in India, what their plans are, and what's the kind of uh, businesses you currently are operating into. Great. So our, our history in India is, uh, is deep and, uh, and, and very diverse. We started in India in the early 60s, uh, and over the course of the last several decades, uh, we've grown into... Uh, several in markets, you mentioned a few, transportation as well as uh, power and energy and um, uh, in the civil aviation side. But what's really been catalyzing our growth over the course of the last, I'd say, 10 to 15 years has been the work that we do in uh, advanced manufacturing, uh, specifically in the life sciences world and, and now uh, semiconductor uh, plants. The work that we do here in India supports uh, supports the rest of the world. Okay. Uh, and now with the growth, and we saw it first with life sciences, and now the, the renaissance that's going to happen with regards to uh, chip manufacturing, um, we're taking that expertise that we've delivered for the rest of the world for so long, and we're going to be delivering uh, for, for projects here in India. Okay. Uh, there's always a con confusion because normally people confuse Jacobs with also in India, right? You know, like they are mostly into EPC. But I think your uh, expertise lies more into designing and consultancy business. So what are the projects that you have already done in India? And would you like to elaborate more on that? And also what kind of opportunity you think that semiconductors would present for you? Sure. So here in India, uh, a lot of our work has revolved around those, I'll start with infrastructure, those that either have been supported by large private sector clients uh, or the federal government. So uh, large airports, we were, we were the program manager at the new Mumbai airport. Uh, it's not new anymore, but right. <laughs> uh, we were the program manager there. Uh, we're currently the program manager at the, the new, uh, soon to be open Noida International Airport, okay. uh, as well as other airports uh, around the country. Um, we do quite a bit of work for the Indian Navy in mm -hmm. the ports and maritime field. In advanced manufacturing, uh, we have been on the forefront uh, of the life sciences uh, boom, India today has more FDA regulated uh, facilities than any other country outside the US. Right. Uh, and so the work with, uh, with Biocon, with Shanta, with uh, Ready Labs, uh, we've been involved with uh, all of that work uh, mm -hmm. here in India. And then now Semiconductor. Uh, we've uh, recently announced that we were uh, awarded the CG Power uh, Test and Assembly mm -hmm. Facility. And, uh, and we're involved in the five units. Uh, we're involved in most of those units that the, the, the government as well as the states uh, are, are supporting. Right. Uh, give a little bit more detail. When you say that you are a project manager for, say, uh, no, airports, the upcoming airports, even Navi Mumbai in Noida, all these projects are now going to be commissioned very soon. So what exactly was the role that uh, Jacobs played in that? Yeah. So we're, we're, we're what's called a program manager. Right. So we'll work with the client in, uh, in interfacing the designer, the constructor, uh, and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and so managing that entire interface on behalf of the owner is, uh, is what we did. So it's really the driver of getting those major, major programs completed on time and within budget. And when we talk about a project, say when we talk about the project cost, how much would this uh, be you know, as part of the total project cost? How much would your uh, consultancy or your project management would, you know, contribute to it? You know, on a, on a, it, it varies. It varies. In, in a typical program management type of environment, you know, it could be a, a few percentage points of the overall cost right. for the program. But keep in mind, these are multi-billion dollar programs uh, that uh, are executed. So it's a valuable tool and service that we offer for, uh, for our clients. Okay. And uh, when we are talking about semiconductors, uh, you were here at the event. India has laid the path for you new know, semiconductor till 2030 and even beyond. From $160 billion right now, we are looking at $700 billion kind of opportunity. So where and in which field and also across India, where do you see those potential uh, you know, to, uh, 
to be coming up, opportunities to be coming up. Well, obviously, the state of Gujarat right now has uh, has been very, uh, very aggressive in mm -hmm. uh, in supporting and um, in catalyzing uh, companies to um, to come to to, to the state. Uh, I, I see that uh, this is a renaissance, mm -hmm. and the sponsorship that the Indian government uh, has given to private sector clients, both Indian clients as well as international clients uh, that, that mm -hmm. are coming here to India is, uh, is, is pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that uh, uh, of, of all of the different countries that we've seen in the world make major sponsorships and endorsements of, of programs that are going to affect the economy mm -hmm. as well as affect the world, the world uh, India is clearly on the front edge of that. And which are the projects, if you would like to talk about, that you are in discussions with, or if you would like to participate in? Because I think U.S. government has also said that under CHIPS Act 22, they want to participate in India's semiconductor mission, you know. So if you all are involved from that side also in somehow, in some other way. Yeah, most of the work that we're doing, I'll kind of talk about the CHIPS Act first, yeah. and then, you know, what's happening here with regards to, uh, to the Indian government. The CHIPS Act, where our involvement has been, it's a, it's a little bit different. The direct funding aspect of the CHIPS Act is, is not as high as what the Indian government mm -hmm. is embarking upon. Oh, yeah. uh, so those programs and projects in the U.S. that have received CHIPS Act money, uh, we've been involved with every single one of, mm -hmm. of, those, of those programs and projects. Those were well advanced when the government got involved. Right? So different than in India where it's direct funding right, yeah. and the jobs are starting based on the funding that uh, the government and the state government, mm -hmm. the federal government and the state government are, okay. are offering. So we've been involved on the front end of, uh, of most of those uh, here in India. You, most of the projects that's coming up, yeah. you're involved. So of the five, we're involved with four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's one that uh, that's Israeli tower business is coming up with Adanis, and there's one that Tata Electronics is setting up. So right. you were involved in all these? Uh, Tata Electronics, yes, but on the the, the, the Tower Adani yeah. um, partnership. I think that partnership is still working working its way through, okay. uh, and uh, we're in discussions with both both clients. Right. Why is it that uh, India, particularly, was so long dependent on outside world? You know, you think that this is something that India should have taken up much earlier, almost a decade back, rather than phasing out through no, right now and facing the problems. So, still, what are the challenges, according to you, that India has to encounter? Uh, has to overcome so that you know it moves fast. Yeah, I, I would probably reframe a bit instead of uh, um, addressing it as a challenge, uh, to address it as an opportunity. Oh, yeah. You know, as far as why India did not take this opportunity earlier in history, I'm probably not. Uh, it wouldn't be appropriate for mm -hmm. me to opine on that. Um, but I would say this: it's an exciting time now. You know, did it take a a world um, shocking event like the pandemic mm -hmm. where global supply mm -hmm. chains were completely turned upside down right. and in the center of that supply chain challenge was semiconductor chips right. and the whole world was dependent on uh, on those chips because of manufacturing being centered almost in the far east right. for the last decade plus mm -hmm. that has triggered uh, this investment um, as well as other other items right. too right. But on the opportunity side, I'd say mm -hmm. that this time is a great time for India, is that if we think about the chip design, the actual technology that goes into the chip, India has been on the forefront of that for decades. In fact, 20% mm -hmm. of all chip design that goes on in the world mm -hmm. happens here in India. So the expertise and the, the human intellectual horsepower mm -hmm. is here in India. Right. Now, matching that with a manufacturing base mm -hmm. is really going to be transformative. So was manufacturing a biggest uh, hurdle that you think earlier was? Is it that India didn't have that capacity earlier or is it that India deliberately allowed China and others to import to other places? Uh, yeah, I, I probably can't say on that, but I wouldn't say that India was alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Europeans, the Americans, you know, the, the rest of the Western world mm -hmm. also uh, saw this kind of this movement to uh, to, to to China and Taiwan and, mm -hmm. and other areas. So it's a great time for us to be kind of rebalancing that manufacturing base, and uh, and I think it's going to be a great thing for the world. Mm -hmm. So what has Jacobs as far as uh, do you have an R and D facility in India? Do you also do designing for chips in India? No, 
No, we, we don't go into chip design. We're into the fab design. Okay. Uh, the fab is a very complicated mm -hmm. facility that requires a huge amount of interdependency of the structure, the mechanical systems, the electrical systems, the process systems, all tying into uh, the tools. And so uh, that expertise we've had for nearly 40 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, what's the total uh, like you know employees count that you have in India, yeah. and what your plans are given the kind of opportunities you see in India, and till now you also said that you had all already been working on projects for outside India. Correct. But now you will be focusing more on India. Yeah. So are you looking at increasing your employee strength also going in? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're at 4,000 employees today uh, in India, spread across six different locations. Okay. Uh, and we've been here, like I said before, quite a while. I, uh, we fully expect that that headcount will double within the next two to three years. Okay. And, and, and so we're, we're aggressively moving forward. Uh, because remember, there's two parts. There's India for India, and India is an extremely critical platform for us for the world. Right. And mostly focusing on what all sectors that you're looking at increasing these. Same as what we same. have here. Okay. So transportation, water, mm -hmm. environmental, energy and power, as well as uh, the, the advanced manufacturing world. Right. And coming to your other sectors, or no, segment of uh, focus segments, uh, how you are looking at energy transition space? You know, India has uh, like you know plans for 2030 and even beyond. They want to go net zero by 2070, but they have a lot of medium term plans that they have already set up. You know, by 2030 they want to have 500 gigawatt of uh, renewable capacity. Correct. So, what is the areas where you can participate in? It's a it's a great market for us. We're in it right now, with regards to grid modernization and renewable sources of, uh, of energy. So we'll go in and consult with the client on how, you know, what's the best means and methods uh, to, to achieve what their objectives are, mm -hmm. and then actually perform the design of, okay. of, of that facility. I would point mostly to solar, wind, and hydrogen mm -hmm. uh, as, okay. uh, as real, real opportunities as India continues uh, up the value chain in renewable energy. Right. Right now, the <clears throat> problem that India faces is uh, battery energy storage. Yeah. I think in U.S. is still in a very advanced stage, or people have started using it. But India is only dependent on either solar or wind or hybrid. But we are still not using uh, battery energy storage. So, what kind of opportunity is there, you know, in the energy storage and bioenergy, compressed natural gas? If you can talk about uh, that. all all great opportunities. I, I would uh, I wouldn't say that India is too far behind on battery storage. Uh, energy storage is a big topic around the world. Right. Uh, and so, you know, it's not as if India has lost out and now has to catch up. Uh, the, the rest of the world is still, you know, moving in that direction for, uh, for storage. So it's a great time mm -hmm. to, uh, for India to work at the global scale. Um, because really, going back to my first comment, yeah. there's a supply chain issue within battery storage and battery manufacturing as well. Okay. And so all of, you know, working uh, collaboratively across the world is, uh, is a great opportunity. So is that also because of semiconductor-related issues for battery energy storage? Um, some of it is. Uh, okay. Other is, is just manufacturing capacity, mm. right? right. And again, this was a, a market in battery manufacturing. Mm -hmm. This was a market that was dominated by one country, and it was China, right. right? And so now as that kind of moves to Europe, Canada, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the U.S., um, it's a great opportunity to kind of reform that supply chain. Yeah. So when you talk about renewable energy space, here also your role is exactly the same what it's there for semiconductors, right? You'll be providing the design and you'll be providing the work as far as consultancy is concerned, where the project Correct. should come up and how it should come up, right? Correct. Correct. I think there's a valuable piece here in, in why we're honing in our, our expertise on the design of the facility. Mm -hmm. Over decades within Jacobs, and this, this transcends beyond uh, India. India's, yeah. India for us is an integral part of the globe. Is we over time have learned about the science of our client's business. Mm -hmm. So once, once you have a deep understanding of the science, then you can innovate on the facility, you know, the, the capital mm -hmm. that's going to be required in order to produce what you want to produce out of that facility or piece of infrastructure. And so that's kind of been our expertise over the years. So if somebody sets up a 
uh, facility like say biocon biologics facility in bangalore so if they have to set up a, uh, another facility would they still require your help or they can just copy from the previous one and they can no each process is different and then there's local standards and codes mm -hmm. exactly because the yeah. the situation you're describing is exactly what biocon came for us it came okay. came to to utilize our services we had designed a facility in in uh, in bangalore and they wanted to replicate that facility in Southeast Asia. Okay. Uh, but it was a different facility in a different location that had different requirements. Mm -hmm. right. So, so there, are, there, there are some replication elements to the design, um, but you do need a team that understands the nuance of the locality. Mm -hmm. right. You also are participating in Indian Navy business. You are participating in uh, India's sports and uh, maritime, uh, maritime uh, business. So what kind of opportunities are there? India is looking to go big time on submarines, even nuclear submarines. So how would you be advising them and what would be your role in these kind of operations? Uh, we would be involved with the, the design and engineering of the shipbuilding facility. Okay. Or these are, you know, these submarines, uh, especially nuclear submarines, require um, pretty complex uh, port facilities mm -hmm. uh, that aren't necessarily standard. So certain, certain ports need to be converted and then we're also looking at what's the potential for building new ones, mm -hmm. right? So that's the kind of work that we would do. We would consult, and then once we arrive to a solution, we would help design it. So right now you're already working for some of the projects, and which are the existing projects uh, where you have already given your uh, contribution? Yeah, but both, both. So we're, we're involved with existing projects. We've had a history with the Indian Navy, and those jobs are moving forward. I can't necessarily speak mm -hmm. to what they are for obviously security mm -hmm. reasons. Okay. Now, one last question on uh, your overall financial contributions. You know, how is India contributing to your global uh, revenues, and where do you see it going, say, in the next two to three years, given the kind of opportunities we see in India? Sure. It's, it's a difficult question uh, because if you look at uh, that's why I normally answer it with regards to headcount. You know, today India represents uh, close to 10% of our overall headcount, mm -hmm. uh, little little less than 10% of our overall headcount. I very much expect for that to be growing uh, over the course of the, it, it already has. Mm -hmm. In the last two and a half years, we've doubled the size of our, our headcount in mm -hmm. expertise in India, and, uh, and that's going to be moving forward. Um, as far as, you know, what percentage of our overall revenue, you know, I, I, could, I could make an argument that says that 100% of our revenue uh, is, has India involved with, uh, with, that, with that work. So it's... Um, we, we don't necessarily slice and dice it by a vertical. We slice it by a horizontal. Thank you very much for talking to NDTV Profit. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And wish you all the best. For Thank you. you very much. Thanks for your time.